Rich Natoli back with you. You're watching The Vegas Voice. My guests in studio are entertainer, singer, actress Joelle Rigetti, and from Pawn Stars fame, and Art Encounters. What, what street is that on the Arville? It's in Arville and Russell, 5720 South Arville. Now, is there a website that they can go on? There is, www.artencounter.com. Uh, no S, just Art Encounter. Yeah, Brett's the expert on Pawn Stars. You've seen him on there many, many times, mm -hmm. um, appraising the art when they when they call him, when Rick calls him up and says, is this real? <laughs> <laughs> right. Do you get that a lot where they just go, is this real? Uh, yeah, I do. And uh, you, you know, know right away. I, well, a lot of times I do, but sometimes it takes a little bit of research. Uh, yeah. You know, they had me on one time to evaluate a Monet, a painting that could have been worth millions of dollars. And you don't want to shoot from the hip. You don't want to go in there I and say, I think I saw hey, that one. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I think I did too. Yeah. That one it took a little bit more thoughtful uh, approach. You had to, I had to do a little bit of research, and, and I actually involved another expert who, whose passion is impressionist. So he was able to come in and identify a few things that I, I couldn't. So you have to be careful, even though so it's like, a, what did he say? Like, what was different? That what, what 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 did he know that you? Let's say you didn't. Well, he know. he he didn't necessarily you know uh, know a ton of stuff that I didn't know, but he he added another layer to it. You know. Uh, there were some things that I was a little suspicious of, the brush strokes. I didn't think it was textured enough. Monet's an impressionist, which is all about layering the paint and giving, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a spontaneous blast of color, whereas this was a much more muted painting. So yeah. I had my suspicions, but again, I wanted to bring somebody who was a bit more of an authority on Monet to kind of corroborate it. Yeah, so back in the day when these artists were famous, I mean, they weren't famous when they were just working artists, they they really didn't get much for the paintings, right? I mean, it was only just over time where these Picassos and Rembrandts and all these paintings became really worth... Right. I mean, there's all sorts of artists that weren't famous until after their passing. I mean, yeah. Van Gogh's kind of the famous one. He only sold, I think, one or two paintings during his lifetime, and I think he sold them to his brother. Yeah. You know, and then once he <laughs> once crazy. he passed, his the market for his work just took off, and now he's Isn't you know his originals are in the hundred million dollars. Isn't strata, that amazing? So. It's like that line in the, remember the line in the <laughs> Titanic when the guy uh -huh. goes, "This line, this is from a Picasso. He's not going to go anywhere." <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> in yeah. the Usually. Titanic movie. <laughs> oh terrible. yeah. What happened to him? So now, Joel, you have. <laughs> Joel has the uh, a, a company called the Gypsy Mobile Minister. So www.thegypsymobileminister.com. Well, um, a couple of years ago, I uh, was working for a local wedding chapel for some friends of mine in show business, and I um, was driving a limousine for them during the day. And it appeared to me that there's so many weddings here in Las Vegas, but there isn't anybody really catering to a mobile service. Mm -hmm. So I created my own mobile service, and um, people call me from all over the country. They'll call me the same day and say, "Can you marry me?" at four o'clock today on the sidewalk in front of the Bellagio. It's it's insane. And you go, and why? Go, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do <laughs> it <laughs> right there. But it's crazy. Um, I've only been open open a year and a half, and um, unbeknownst to me, when I went on Google AdWords, I didn't realize that there were 50,000 inquiries a month for mobile ministers mm. here in Las Vegas. Wow. I mean, that just mm. seems so um, amazing that you could just... In you know, they uh, all come here to get married. Yeah, I to mean, capitalize on one percent of that would just be insane, right? Right. So, yeah. um, doing this business for me, it's very lucrative. I've been involved in a local church in town called mm -hmm. Canyon Ridge for twenty-five years, and yeah. I've, um, so you know, being being a part of the ministry and doing a lot of um, underground stuff for for you know just for mm -hmm. my beliefs and how I feel about that, I love to make people smile. Being in show yeah. business for uh, you know twenty-five plus mm -hmm. years, um, this business has been amazing for me and something I can grow into. Um, as I grow older. Well, with grouch, you say it's a lot better than funerals, <laughs> let me tell you. Hey, I do those <laughs> too. <laughs> <but anyway. laughs> At least but the people are smiling. <laughs> well, but, but you the know, thing is, yeah, oddly I enough, mean, yeah, they're happy, right? Yeah, I mean, and I mean, there's over 5,000 weddings a month here in Las Vegas. Yeah. And per capita, I mean, they did, f I think, 40 million in weddings here in Las Vegas. Isn't last it like year. a one stop marriage divorce thing here? Like you can get married in window one. <laughs> right, and then you go around. <laughs> and pull around in window, window two, two, and it's oh, all yeah. over. It's buddy. funny. I did a wedding <laughs> last week. This There's is a no lawyer at window <laughs> three. There you go. I did a wedding last week out at um, Calico Basin, and I met the couple out there. I, I officiated their ceremony, and I got an email the next morning. Have you filed the documents yet? And I said, no, I did not. Please do not file the documents yet because something mm. happened last oh. night. Mm -hmm. And then the following day, we definitely do not want you to file the documents under no circumstances should you file the documents. Then 24 hours later, did you did you throw them away? I said, no, I kept the documents because I had a funny feeling you were going to change your mind. <laughs> sure enough, I ended up filing them and they, they got married. But oh, could man, you wow. imagine standing on that? Because it, it happened yeah. so fast. Yeah. Right. They, they sort of called me off of the cuff and said, yeah. we want to get married today at 12 o'clock 
Rock in, in the middle of Red Rock. Now somewhere. you get a lot of those. Like, did you not just have to spur the moment? They like call that? me. Um, they'll and call you get me over to Grand Canyon. Right. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to jump if we can't get married right now. <laughs> it's it's crazy. <laughs> now I have to ask, what goes into a mobile marriage? What do you travel with? Good well, question. they have to get their license from the right. county, uh, and then they arrive with their documents. I need a, um, a witness to sign, and then literally within ten minutes, I officiate their ceremony. Mm. And of course, as you know, that they have to consummate it, but um, that comes after. That's but as long as <laughs> it's everything not in the back of the van. <laughs> Are we going to elaborate on the no, consummation? No, we're not going to uh, elaborate on that. I, um, <laughs> anyway, I'm turning red. <laughs> but um, you have to consummate the pretty marriage. Much, <laughs> pretty much, it's a, it's a, it's an in and out. Ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was a bad choice of words. <laughs> 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 it's an in and out <laughs> process. <laughs> <laughs> I love my life. Uh, Sometimes the business is really a little <laughs> up and down, but we work through it. Is that part of competition out there? And then, okay, so it's <laughs> a lot of stiff competition. <laughs> Mamma mia! Where are we going with this? You know, it's a hit <laughs> even when the tech is laughing. I, I gotta say, you know, and it really is. And so, it <laughs> well, so yeah. now, um, and, and bringing me to another uh, wonderful thing that I get to do, I just, I love my life. Tomorrow, I will be <laughs> jumping on a plane, and on the weekend, I'll be in West Virginia. No, with you're jumping in a plane. I'm Evil Knievel jumped place. on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping over the, over the cow, jumped over the moon. So no, I'm, I'm going to West Virginia tomorrow to do a weekend engagement with Legends and Concert. Oh. Uh, share. Oh, I thought you were going to say you're going to marry. Yeah, no. you do share. Do a little share. I'm right. doing share. You know, Sonny the Rip, <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that. He hit a tree. <laughs> when you're skating and you hit a tree, they call it a bono. <laughs> so and if I could turn back time, I'd turn it back to when they when they had marriages for a lot longer than five minutes and they didn't have divorces happening the next day. Anyway. You know what you know what I loved about the, the whole great. the whole Sunny and Cher thing? Remember when they did the little quick reunion when Letterman made them sing together? Yes. Wasn't that a classic? Yes, yeah. it really was. I think a lot I of I think the, they were both crying too, right? The pictures that, that they put yeah. up, Legends grabs a lot of those pictures oh, oh, they and do. he they throughout the From entire the 20 show, show they that, grab yeah. uh, i mean some amazing yeah. um, mm. images that yeah. appear behind me when i'm performing and i i recall looking over a few times and almost you know not you can't get caught up in the moments when you're performing you really have to stay pretty neutral and um yeah so you know when you see a photograph like that and it's and it's something that iconic and classic it will definitely bring how did he hit a tree because I'm thinking skiing. like, okay, you know when you, okay, so when you're born, <laughs> when you're born and they say, and if everybody knew how they were going to leave this earth and you say, okay, how am I going to die? And Sonny, how am I going to die? Well, you know, you're going to have this big successful career and then you're going to go into politics, you're going to have and success. Then you're going to hit a tree. you're going to hit a freaking Woo! tree. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that's kind terrible. of embarrassing. Yeah. That's kind of an embarrassing way that's to go. Embarrassing. You know, that's I mean, terrible. you hit a tree. Yeah. You know. Awful. Uh, but anyway, so, and so now, okay, so now, uh, when's your next, you doing Pawn Stars? They just call you spur of the moment? To I guess they're getting ready to start a new season. Mm -hmm. So they just uh, I told me that they're to get ready because How they're going to be filming. How much notice do they? You know, it depends on the item. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, a day. Sometimes they'll give me a, a week or so. Right. Uh, but, you know, I, I run my own business, so they can't just yeah. put up the bat signal and have me yeah, charge down there. Yeah, I know. You're not on call for them. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it looks like that on the show, but they usually give me a, a reasonable amount of notice. Right. And then they call you in. And how long are you technically there when you go there? In other words, when you go there, is it pretty much resolved or do you, or, uh, um, or do you have to go do more research and then come back? No, w when I go there, it's usually pretty much resolved. Now, sometimes I'll do a little bit of research ahead of time if they mm -hmm. say, hey, we've got a dolly coming in just so that way, you know, I, I have a little bit better idea. But I, I have to say, I mean, I don't know the final result until I inspect it because there's been times where, you know, what they've told me was coming in wasn't what was presented and yeah. there were problems. So, you know, a lot of times, you know, Pawn Stars get some flack for not being, you know, real enough. But I tell yeah. you, the, the transactions and how they're presented to me as far as the uh, you know the you know the, the the authentication and all of that, all of that is legitimate. Yeah, you know, a friend of mine, um, John Pate, comedian friend of mine, mm -hmm. he he used to tour with Red Skelton, and when Red Skelton was on the airplane, he sketched a bunch of sketches because he mm -hmm. would sketch right, and he gave them to John. Well, he mm -hmm. sold one on Pawn Stars. Well, I appeared with him on that. Oh, episode, were you on that episode? Fact, I came John? in and I <laughs> yes, authenticated yes. them, and that's yeah, right, we, were, yes. we were together. That's right. So. Yes, yes, you were. That's right. <laughs> and so, um, what'd you think of those? I mean, were they pretty good sketches? Or uh, you know, I thought they were great. And 
like we were talking about, you know, provenance makes such a big difference, and mm -hmm. having the, having Red Skelton actually give him the drawings and the history behind it, and mm -hmm. there was there was a spot where you know a dripping from one of uh, you know Red Skelton's cigars like went onto the, one yeah. of the pieces, and he turned it into a butterfly. So instead of a brown splotch, he turned it into the a guy butterfly. Had these so, talents, yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. so having that history and that knowledge and insight into the artwork really adds to its value. Yeah, um, we're talking to Brett Maley from Pawn Stars, and we're talking to uh, Joel Rigetti. We'll be right back. You're watching a Vegas Voice.